Hey, Fellowship Asheville, welcome to our Convo Cast, uh, where we hope to inspire you with stories of what God is doing in and through the people of Fellowship Asheville. And in season three, um, we are highlighting uh, people, missions and missionaries and organizations that we support. Uh, and today I want to introduce you to Mary Massey, um, who is great fun, one of the missionaries that we support, like was here at Fellowship Asheville and now is in a different country um, doing what God has called her to do there. And so I'll let her share that story. But um, but Mary, say hi to everybody. Hi, guys. Just so you know, just so you know, okay, it's 12 o'clock noon here in Asheville. What mm -hmm. time is it where you are? It is 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Thank you, God, for Zoom and technology oh, yes. for us to be able to talk like this. It's so cool. Awesome. So cool. Well, Mary, um, tell us a little bit about who you are to those who are watching and listening. So like Fred said, my name is Mary and I grew up in um, Georgia, right around Atlanta, Georgia. And I have... Uh, um, a dad, my mom passed away when I was little, and then a brother and a sister, both older. Um, and I lived, I grew up going to summer camp in North Carolina at Camp Prestridge and um, ended up staying there for the internship. And that's how I got involved with Fellowship Asheville. Um, so, yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, tell us something that most folks don't know about you. <clears throat> So I thought about this question for a long time. Oh, and, good, 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 good. Uh, <laughs> um, so I actually have a collective, uh, a decorative spoon collection, which like you may see these spoons in gift shops and like touristy places. And you're like, why do you need a spoon like that? Um, but I actually collect them. So like my grandmother gave me some and then I started collecting them from her collection. Like you mean like the... You know what I'm the yeah, like the spoons that hang on the little pieces of wood yeah. and they have like a decorative, like for different states and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you so have, do you states. have any there with you where you are? I don't. Oh, I don't that's Georgia. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably not yeah. something you pack to take with you, but, but, no. uh, but that's good to know. If anybody has some of those laying around, not sure what to do with them. <laughs> now we know. There that's we great. Have. So how many yeah. spoons do you have? I tried to think about how many I have. I have at least 20, I want to say. Wow. Okay. What's it's the not, one that's the yeah. most like unique or the one that you're like, okay, I, I love this one. <laughs> the most interesting one uh, is probably my spoon from Alaska. Um, it's like an engraved metal looking spoon instead uh -huh. of just a regular spoon. So there's like mm -hmm. a little carved into the spoon. Ooh. Oh, very things. nice. Yeah. Did you go to Alaska to get it? I did. One of my See, that's the great thing about those spoons is there's there always and... a story attached to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who'd you say lives there? One of my best childhood friends, uh, cool. her and her husband and family uh, lived on the army base up there for a couple of years. So I cool. snuck a trip in before they moved onward. Nice. Nice. Well, for, for everybody listening, tell us a little bit about how you came to know Jesus. Yeah. So I Got to know Jesus at a young age. I grew up in the church with believing parents who um, thankfully not only took us to church, but also lived out the gospel at home. Mm -hmm. um, and so I put my faith in Jesus when I was seven years old uh, with my dad after watching one of those classic movies about Moses, uh, I think it was, and mm -hmm. there was some connection to Jesus at the end. And uh, that was my moment. Uh, but the Lord has been faithful to grow me and sanctify me so much um, throughout my years since then um, through different experiences and different people. And um, so it hasn't been just, you know, seven and onward, but right. um, it's a journey. Yeah. yeah, it is a journey with ups and downs, but, but a, a good trajectory none, nonetheless. That's, that's great. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> so so, okay, talk about where are you right now? Yeah, so I'm currently located in Moldova, which is which a is where? country in Eastern Europe, yes. uh, about the size of Maryland. And it's sandwiched between Ukraine and Romania, which if you don't know Eastern okay. European geography at all, it's south of Russia, but before Turkey kind of. Okay, 
So um, we talked a little bit about this before we hit record. When I hear of Moldova, I think of the Princess Diaries, that, that Anne Hathaway's character, that she became the Princess of Genovia. So I feel like for some reason, because yeah. it was a really small country too, um, mm -hmm. uh, which if I remember correctly. Um, so what's, what's life like in Moldova? And then we'll talk about your ministry and what you do there, but, but what's the culture yeah. like there? So um, the culture is very, is varied. Uh, the Moldovan people are closely related to the Romanian people, mm -hmm. and so they speak Romanian uh, in most places in Moldova, but then there's also this people group called the Gaguz people group, and they mm -hmm. generally, they have their own language, uh, Gaguzian, but, which is a Turkish dialect, they're a Turkish people group, but they um, generally speak Russian. So I speak Russian and I'm able to communicate with these people who also speak Russian. How did you um, learn Russian? So um, I grew up going on mission trips to Russia and uh -huh. wanted to speak with uh, the kids that I worked with and in high school decided to start studying it just online and then in college ended up majoring in it, in it um, and lived, studied abroad for a year in Russia. And then now I've kind of mastered the uh, conversational Russian since being here. That's impressive because Russian is a difficult language. Yeah. Like in English, correct me if I'm wrong, like there's basically when you conjugate a verb, it's like past, present, and future. And in Russian, mm -hmm. how many how many ways can you conjugate a verb? It's like 30 something, so, isn't it? It's, there's a lot. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get started on it, but just to say like he walks, you can say a lot of different ways, depending on if he's walking around something or if he walked past fence or if he was walking, like the whole time thing in English uh -huh. is different in Russian. And Wow. Yeah. It's wow. Different. It's a whole different <laughs> world. It's a whole different world. Well, yeah. what, what ministry are you doing there? So I work at an after-school children care program uh, uh -huh. center, and it's called Narnia after the Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, that's fun. Um, yeah, so it's like their little escape from the world. Aww. And during the school year, we have a group of 40 kids who come to our center after school. And uh, we feed them lunch, uh, help them with their homework, and then usually we have different uh, rotations. So um, an English rotation, which I teach, um, craft rotation. Some days we have a Bible lesson. Some days we have um, one of the guys come in and teaches a computer class or a guitar lesson um, kind of thing. And so that's our school year program. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the summertime, we have camps for the kids, day camps. And then this summer, we were able to have one week of like a sleepaway camp, which was really fun. Oh, yeah. Um, very different than, than Crestridge, but. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Know. Did where, what was the facilities? I'm curious. What were the facilities like there for a, a week away camp? Yeah. The reason so, I ask is because I did some in Russia and in Latvia and they were like old barracks basically is what we were in which was interesting <laughs> this sounds a little bit I think is a little bit better than old barracks but good good um, good good they had you know a dining room and then little I wouldn't call them cabins but they're just like separate houses basically and so okay. two rooms in each house with two toilets and six people, I think. Yeah, three bunk beds in each room. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So there were eight or nine of those and then like a leader cabin kind of house and a, another building for crafts and things like that. That's Couple awesome. Football fields or soccer fields. So how did you get from Crestridge to Moldova? Yeah, so... Um, it's a long story. I will try to cut it short. But um, so I mentioned earlier that I grew up going on mission trips to Russia. Mm -hmm. And um, I, many people often ask me like how I got started doing that. And um, my mom actually 
used to help a missionary couple at our church who was from Russia with a ministry to Russian orphans. Um, and so when she passed away, they ended up doing a short-term mission trip to one of the, or one of the orphanages that they helped. Mm -hmm. And so my dad took my sister and I, and we started going to Russia um, every summer to do summer camp with the kids. And so when we were there, um, we met another missionary couple, um, Maxime and Lisa Friesen, and they were living in you know, walking distance from the orphanage, working with these kids year round, helping them. And so we really wanted to help invest in them as they were investing in the kids year round. Mm -hmm. And so started working with them, became like family friends with them. And I thought, you know, maybe God's calling me to come help them in Russia with their ministry. Um, and then God had different plans for them. The Maxime is a German citizen. And so he, his visa was denied renewal and they mm -hmm. had to move elsewhere. Um, so they moved to Moldova to this Russian speaking portion of Moldova. Okay. And so um, I had been thinking about it since college of, you know, when I should go to, or if I should go to Russia to help them. And um, they were, in the process of fighting this visa denial and then ended up saying like, no, this is you know God's plan for us. So that was my college time. And then right when I started my camp internship was when they were settling down in Moldova. And so okay. um, God just kind of lined up the timing with that. So Russia and now Moldova has been on my brain and my heart for a long time. And it's yeah. just been the timing now that's, uh, that's, come into play so yeah i'm i'm curious where in russia were you i mean i know it's a very big country but <laughs> yeah so i was in the smolensk region which is six hours outside of moscow towards europe towards the okay Earth. okay yeah I, I never went that way i always went south or east of moscow and, th and it's funny because everybody goes well it's 12 hours this way of Moscow. It's six hours this way of Moscow. You know, those those yeah. train rides are quite memorable. Yeah. 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 Well, what um uh as you're there uh doing ministry with them, what brings you your greatest joy? Like when do you light up? Yeah. So my uh greatest joy moments are with my kids that I work with day in and day out. And mm -hmm. it's usually when I see some sort of growth in them, especially like spiritual growth. And um for example, one of the boys who's just turned nine years old, I've known him for since I've been here, so like a year and a half. And uh he has a really terrible family life and um but we talk with him whenever he's in our center and I have him over at my house a lot too. And he would never pray. He was always, we always give the kids an opportunity to pray before lunch. So, you know, mm -hmm. who wants to pray? And he was always terrified, never would want to. Uh, there was a period of time when he lived with me for a couple months, just because his home life was not going well. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, still refused to pray, just the two of us, you know, I'm putting him to bed, like, you want to pray? No, no, okay, you know. Uh, and then recently, I want to say in the last few months, he finally was like, I'll pray. And, you know, it was very uh, short, and it was, you know, dear Jesus, thank you for this food, amen, you know, but just yeah. the, the growth and the courage to actually start that conversation with God was really encouraging to see. Yeah. I mean, because I tell you, there are adults listening to this right now that are scared to pray out loud. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's very real. It's very real. Yeah. And to see that growth, even in that, like that little bit, it's so big. It's so big. Mm -hmm. Well, so I'm assuming every day isn't a smiley, happy, uh, lights your face with joy day. Mm -hmm. what's, a, what's a bad day like there for you in the ministry and how do you get through it? Um. A bad day for me normally consists of some sort of cultural conflict, mm -hmm. uh, just in the differences in culture. Um, I came expecting it to be the same as Russian culture, because that's what I'm familiar with, that they speak mm -hmm. Russian here. But it's very much a Turkish culture, this Gagauzian culture. And so um, generally speaking, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, they're very disorganized. They don't plan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just like I'm, I enjoy order and 
having a routine and there really isn't routine here. So normally a bad day is when we have something planned and then nobody cares and nobody does anything about it. I don't know. Mm. Um, also missing my family makes it a bad day, I guess. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, so how do you get through? So, um, you know, the, the right answer is the right answer for me. When I, when I go to Jesus and spend time with him, uh, mm -hmm. things, my perspective changes and gets better. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, sometimes I'll make like uh, chocolate chip pancakes or uh, tacos. You know, they don't really have a little taste of home. Mexican, yeah, they don't have Mexican influence here. And so, uh -huh. or Spanish influence. Do they few. have the spices there or do you have to bring them from home? I usually bring them from home. There's, okay. they have like red pepper, but, mm -hmm. other but it's than different. That, they, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I bet food, food is, is, is important, you know, cause it is, mm -hmm. it's like a little taste of home. That's great. Yeah. Um, and, and I love that phrase. The right answer is the right answer. That's a great <laughs> phrase, you know, especially yeah. if you grew up in church, cause you know, the right answer, you know, uh, right. but, but oftentimes it's the right answer because it is the right answer. Like, like right. that's a, that's I'm a brilliant so line. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. You'll hear that in a message. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. <laughs> and I'm I'm giving you credit right here because I'll probably forget to do it when I'm preaching. But maybe okay. not. You never know. You never know. But just know it came it came from Mary Massey. That's where it came from. Um, as you look ahead, uh, well, let me ask you this. Um, you know, you talk about the right answer being the right answer and going to Jesus. How have you seen growth in your life uh, during this season? Because if I remember correctly, like you were in Moldova, came home during mm. the pandemic. Uh, we're here and then, well, here being in Georgia and then, and now you're back in Moldova. So that's a lot of mm -hmm. change and a lot of, I'm sure, frustration. And so how, how have you grown in this process? Mm -hmm. um, I have done some pond hopping, as they say, going back and forth because of the pandemic. And then mm -hmm. I had some training that I needed to accomplish before coming back for long-term ministry. Um, but I think my greatest growth has been in learning um, spiritual disciplines. So with cultural mm. differences, there's also differences in the church style. There's differences in worship and teaching um, just in like what spiritual life looks like here. And to me, it's very dry. And so I have to find, you know, like Apostle Paul says, how to feed yourself and mm -hmm. um, not just rely on the culture or the Christian culture or my friends um, to really make sure that I'm continuing to grow and be in a, in a good place spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. It is that whole cultural differences because, you know, church life is very, is church life there similar to the Russian church? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So is it like where women are on one side, men are on the other, like that, that kind, or is it, is it, it's interesting The it was like that up until the pandemic and with the pandemic, people sat with their family groups. And so it, oh. it kind of switched up a few things. There's a few things that the pandemic wow. changed in the church. Yeah. That's so huge. Some people still sit separate, but uh, I would say probably about half of couples and families now sit together instead of okay. sitting separate. It's normal, normally the older generation that still sits. Yeah apart from that. Yeah. Now, speaking of church, for those of you listening, if you engage online, you will see Mary Massey's name because uh, she's she engages with us during the service on what well, Sunday morning here. It's what Sunday afternoon there, I guess. And and I, I think you're even an online host, aren't you? An online host, part of the prayer mm -hmm. team, something like that. Yeah, you're an online host. Yeah. yeah so online host. so mm -hmm. we live in this great age where, you know, you can still be a part of Fellowship Asheville on the other mm -hmm. side of the world, which is, it blows my mind. Um, I was, that that's that was one thing that I was really happy about, you know, I was yeah. able to join a growth group uh, online. Oh, that's and, right. Yes. You're in a growth group. You're, you're in, in Stacy, my wife and, and Lisa's growth group, which is mm -hmm. again, crazy to think that, <laughs> you know, there you are in Moldova and, and actively engaged in the life of the church here as well, which is mm -hmm. just amazing. Yeah. Um, well, uh, so speaking of, of, of 
you know, ministry and, and all that, as you look ahead, what do you hope happens in the ministry there? Um, so I would love for um, the kids that we work with to grow not only spiritually, but also to see them grow up and become these mentors for other mm. kids that are going to be coming into the program. Um, the, the center is only three years old. And so now this fall, our oldest kids are going to be in that age 13 years old where they need to start, you know, helping more than just receiving everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's an interesting transition and praying goes well. Um, but also just to see growth in the local church and having them uh, get more involved with, with kids in the city and outreach um, and things like that. So, yeah, That's that great. would be any, I think any good missionaries, I'm not calling myself a good missionary here, but any good goal for a missionary is that the locals can sustain the work that you're doing. Absolutely. And so that's my goal is that locals will see value in the work that I'm doing. Um, yeah. I want to continue that on their own. So that's great. That's great. Well, as you think about Fellowship Asheville, uh, it's a question that I ask. And during season three, I don't necessarily ask it to everybody because they're not as actively involved and connected here. They're just organizations mm -hmm. and ministries that we support because we love the work that they do. But you're one of those people that are actively involved here. And so so I can ask you this question, what does Fellowship Asheville mean to you? Like in a word or a phrase? Um, I think I would say encouragement. Mm. Um, I'm always encouraged when I'm either interacting with Church Online or with my growth group ladies. Um, and I always think it's like so weird that I've, I've been absent, you know, online, I guess, for longer than I was in person officially with Fellowship Asheville. Really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because so, even or, during the pandemic, you only came here like one Sunday, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Like in person one Sunday and the rest, you were either in Georgia or, or, or um, Everything was back in Moldova. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, wow. yeah, encouragement has to be the word for me. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Mary, this has been so much fun and it's so fun to, to see you again. And if people want to contact you or if they want to support your ministry, is like, is that something that are, do you raise support to do what you do or are y'all funded through something else? Yeah, so I do raise support. I go through a mission organization called United World Mission. Okay, and, so if people wanted um, to contact you or support you, how would they do that? So if you guys want to shoot me an email, uh, that's probably the easiest way to do that. And it's mary.massey at uwm.org. Okay, so it's mary, M-A-R-Y dot Massey, M-A-S-S-E-Y at what? Mm -hmm. At uwm.org. Uwm.org. What does the UWM stand for? The United World Mission. United World Mission. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. Um, also, if you uh, didn't catch that, you can email me and I'll be glad to forward your email to her as well. All right. Well, Mary, thank you. And listen, if you're if you're uh, watching on YouTube, feel free to click like and subscribe. Or if you're on iPods or anything else, subscribe to us there so you can continue to get notifications of when these and, and other podcasts come out. Uh, but Mary, it has been a joy. Thank you for being the church with us all the way where you are. I thank you often when I say no matter who you are or where you are, we're a church for you. Because I'm like, we got people in Moldova uh, who are engaging with us. So it's so cool. And Mary, we pray for you. Is there anything before we close down is there anything specific that our people can be praying for you um i mean there's always things i'm trying to think of yeah. I, I guess um i have a family that family that i was talking about before that's heavy on yeah. my heart uh you know so just prayer for them and that authorities would be able to make some good decisions regarding this okay. family um, okay and then, yeah. Well, we can we can certainly do that. Mary, we love you. And we love being in the church with you. And uh, I'll see you on a screen again sometime soon. All okay. Right. Church, love you. Love being in the church with you too. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.